Yeah, I'm watching this brother, Aisha Yah, from uh, GMS North Carolina. Uh, the name of his video is News and Prophecy. The stage is set for dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> I'm watching it on my uh, TV here. Um, his channel is GMS All Precepts. And there's like only 31 people watching. But if he was talking about the woman, <laughs> there'd be oh, there'd be three, maybe four or five times that much watching. Because the majority of you Israelite men out there, yeah, I said it. The majority of you are a bunch of goddamn simps. Anyway, uh, I said that um, I would reply to this video here. This was sent to me by a, um up-and-coming elder, Barack Gabar. He's from the main camp, and uh, a couple of, uh, uh, even the Apostle, Elder Apostle Ramlap sent this video to me as well, and uh, just now, the brother from uh, Texas, another up-and-coming elder, Elder Yashawamba from Dallas, Texas, real cool brother, actually stayed by his crib, all right, when I was down there in Texas, all right, he sent this video to me, so without further ado, let me jump into this video here. Which one of you Israelite groups lied to this brother? <laughs> and um, let me start by saying all praises and glories due to Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Rekakwadash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth, for putting us in the best position that we can ever be in. That is to know this knowledge, this truth, this understanding of these scriptures. The 100% truth, baby. Okay. So without further ado, let's get into it. So that's Barack Gabar, the brother to the furthest right of your screen. That's Barack Gabar right there. Let me bring it back. The volume is a little low, so this is as high as I can get it, so. So my dad is half black, and my mom is white. Okay. I'm thinking my dad's like half Latino. Okay. Right. So my, am I, you guys? No, you're not. You're not. Why? Like, I ain't about this man. Your father. Do you know what his father is? So you from the tribe of Ephraim? Why would you think you were Edomite? Because I don't know. I talk to a lot of. Yeah, for those of you that are new, our nationality comes from our father. All right, the father, or the man rather, carries the seed, okay, of uh, our, our nationality. So it really doesn't matter what your mother is, okay. It goes by your father. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, when you look up the word genealogy in the etymology dictionary, you know what word you'll see there? Fathers. Because uh, the genealogy comes from our father. Father carries the seed. As a matter of fact, check this out. This is 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And we're going to go to the 8th uh, verse. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. See? So even a woman gets her nationality from her father. That's why a woman, either she has the last name of her father or the last name of her husband. Because in reality, women are just property. They're just property, man. And I know a lot of you women in this so-called feminist age, you don't like to hear that. But it ain't about what you like to hear or what you don't like to hear. It's about the truth. Okay? The, wo the woman uh, came from the man. Came from the man's seed. Okay? So that was 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. For the, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Then it goes on to say, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. And again, in this feminist age, they, they don't want to hear that. You women were created to serve us. And it's going to go back to that. The word woman means servant. It's going to go back to you serving us, as you were created to do. Let's go from there to... Uh, you know, the truth uh, truth is a hard pill for many to swallow. That's why there's going to be a lot of death and destruction. Why? Because the majority of people reject the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. And really, the truth is only for the Israelites, beginning with the elect. So there you go. Let's go to um, 
Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter. Show you that we that we come from our fathers. Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter. I think it begins at the first verse. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, seven and one. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth, and that would be who Adam, and in my which Adam was what a man. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man. Now, when you go into, if we were to read this in the Greek, the word there for seed would be sperma, which that's where you get the word sperm from, you see? And that comes from the man. That don't come from the woman. That comes from the man, which the man shoots that into the woman. The woman is nothing but an incubator for the man's seed. That's why when a nation go to conquer another nation, what do they do? They kill all the men and they, they take, if the woman is beautiful enough, they take the woman and they impregnate the woman. They bring back their kind through that woman. So it should be clearly obvious to you that a woman is nothing but a, she's nothing but property and she's nothing but an incubator for a man's seed. Okay? <laughs> to tell you the truth, man. It says, of the seed of man, and the pleasure that came with sleep, meaning with uh, sex, okay? Which indeed, sex is a pleasure. So let's get back to the video. So going back to this video here, like the brother said, uh, Barack Gabar, let me bring it back. The father. Right, let me bring it back. Right. So am I, am I, you guys? No, you're not. You see what he said? He, he went right to it. I mean, the, the, the swag, the swag, the swag, the swag is a little part of it, but, but it's about the father. He answered correctly. And the brother in the middle, he, he should learn to, he, he's new to this. He's a novice. He should learn to, to, uh, to, uh, know when to open his, open his mouth, man. Know when to keep it, keep it quiet, you know? Uh, so what Barack Obama said is, is a hundred percent correct. And that's according to scripture. It's about our father. I just showed you some scriptures on it. So let's move on. You know what his father is? So you're from the tribe of Ephraim. Why would you think? You, you notice he asked him, do you know what his father is? Because again, uh, you go back to the book of, let me show you an example here. Matthew, the first chapter. What do you see here? The genealogy of Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. Now, when you read this Matthew, the first chapter, it gives you Yahweh Shai's fathers, which goes all the way back to who? All right, all the way back to Abraham. Okay, all these are men here Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, Judas, Perez. All right, uh, Ezra. Ezram, Aram, all these are men here, right? The genealogy of Yahweh Shai, okay? Now, showing you it's about the fathers. Now, let's go to Etam Online. Etam Online. And we're going to type in genealogy. What I should have did was... Yep, here we go. Take this, copy this, boom. Gotta work hard work smart, not hard, <laughs> as they say. It's a line in the carpentry. Work work smart, not hard. Uh boom, genealogy, right? So let's go to genealogy, which is a noun. And you're gonna see from the Latin line of descent pedigree so in in matthew the first chapter they're giving you yahweh shai's genealogy He's, and you still got people that believe that yahweh shai didn't have a biological father so if that's the case why is his why is his genealogy in matthew the first chapter huh because he did have a biological father his biological father his name was joseph and joseph's line as proven here in matthew the first chapter Joseph's line went all the way back to King David. That's why Yahweh Shai, one of his titles was the son of David. 
because he came out of that Davidic line, that Davidic genealogy. It says from the late Latin gene, genealogia, tracing of a family. Now, who's the head of the family? The man. The man carries what is called what? The family jewels. What is that? Nuts. Okay, the family jewels. I'm proving my point that the, the genealogy goes back to the man, our fathers. I mean, that should be easy to understand, but you still got people that believe your, your genealogy is reckoned by your mother. <laughs> the making of a pedigree, right? Uh, let's see. An old English word for it was fall, fall, fallock, kalu, uh, alu. If, that, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, which I probably am not, literally, folktale meaning study of family trees, is from 1768. Okay. Oh, we're getting warm. Progenitor. Uh, pertaining to or the nature of genealogy, relating to or exhibiting the succession of offspring from a progenitor. Progenitor, another word for a progenitor is a father. Progenitor, when you break that word down, literally means pro means before. Genitor means genes. Your genes go before through your father. All right, so you get the idea, okay? So let's get back to the video. Why would you think you were Edomite? Because I don't know. I've talked a lot of... It's not about color. It's about you see what you hear what he said? He said he's talked to a lot of Israelites, unlearned Israelites, and they don't accept him because of the way he looks. And that's, see, now Barack Gabar had sent me this video because we, um, myself, and uh, Bishop Sakran last Tuesday, we touched on that topic. How uh, you had at the uh, main school, 1 West 125th Street, you had... Uh, certain Israelites that didn't want to accept the guy based on the way he looked. All right. And uh, this is before the uh, knowledge of um, the Israelite foreigners really came into this thing of ours. And like I said, and I'll say it again, the knowledge of the Israelite foreigners, you know, the Israelites being scattered among the different nations and they're going to come looking like the different nations. It was GMS, Great Millstone, that brought that out, beginning with Elder Pastor on down. Because that was not really taught mainly at the at the main school. All right, it was not. I was there. I know that for a fact. So that information of the Israelite foreigners really came through Great Millstone, GMS through Elder Pastor on down. Okay, Do, these are facts. Okay, so let's hear that again. Why would you think you were Edomite? Because I don't know. I talked a lot of. It's not about color. It's about the spirit. It's not about color. Okay. It's not about color. All right. The, the Heavenly Father looks at the spirit. Okay. The, and again, the Heavenly Father said that Israel is not hidden from him. Okay. He's not. See, man looks at the, What did the Lord tell uh, Samuel? First, let's get that before we get the other scripture. That would be 1 Samuel 16. Man looks at the outward appearance. And you still got Israelites that do that. As soon as a so-called white man come up, they blast into you. You got you to you gotta prove into his background. You got to find out what his pedigree is, his genealogy. Then you get an idea of what kind of spirit you're dealing with. This is it right here, 1 Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, another word for face, or on the height of his stature, meaning his outward appearance, because I have refused him. For the, when you read the story, it's talking about when Samuel was sent to anoint the next king. 
among the sons of Jesse, right? And it turned out that David, which was one of Jesse's sons, would be the king. And, and uh, David was the one that was looked down upon. Oh, he's a stripling. Oh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't look like a king. Look at him. You know, but that was the one the Heavenly Father chose among the sons of Jesse. Okay, so this is the he Heavenly Father instructing Samuel. Uh, look, I don't look on the outward appearance. I look at the spirit. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. You see? For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And that's why we tell you, you're going to have Israelites looking like the different nations where they were scattered, including the Edomites. But you still got Israelites that are stuck on stupid, man. The Holy Spirit ain't working with them. They're looking on the outward appearance. No, the Heavenly Father looks at the heart as in the spirit. Okay? And... Israel is not hidden from him. Every last one of the members of the elect of the nation of Israel will be present and accounted for, no matter where they're scattered. And they're going to be joined by this word, by this gospel. They're going to hear the word. They're going to be it's going to be mixed with faith, as it says in Hebrews, the fourth chapter. They're going to believe in it. And ultimately, they're going to be saved by their belief in the word. And that's only for the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay? Israel is not... It might not come up. I have a feeling it's not going to. Oh, I, I'm surprised. I can't believe it came up. Hosea, the fifth chapter, the third verse. I know Ephraim. Oh, wait a minute. It turns out this guy this guy was what? From the tribe of Ephraim, right? Right? Because you got a lot of Ephraimites that look like straight up so-called white people. But a lot of them are Jake, man. All right? Hosea 5 and 3. I know Ephraim. And going back to the main school. At 125th Street, uh, if you were a real light-skinned Ephraimite, damn near looked like you could pass, at least back then. We're talking about the early 1990s. And and uh, Elder Apostle Ramlov can account for that, okay, because he went through it, all right? Um, and that's kind of heavy that this knowledge is coming out because obviously, you know, we get new people coming into this thing of ours every day. So they got to know about that history. Okay, at one time, they, they, you had a hard time if you were Ephraimite that looked like a straight up so-called white person. You had a hard time go, going to that school. You got hard looks and all of that. Okay, now we understand that more than we did back then. Okay, but, but truth be told, we always knew that eventually the Lord would bring in all kind of Israelites looking like the different nations where they were scattered. Hell, we were teaching that... Uh, going back to the early 1990s, going into the mid-1990s, especially when that Cornelius Council came in. By then, we had full understanding of that. All right? So the, the facts got to be taught, man. The facts got to be brought out there and taught. Okay? So going back to Hosea, the fifth chapter, the third verse, I know Ephraim, and Israel is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. So Israel, all the Israelites are not hid from the Heavenly Father. And every last one of them are going to be present and accounted for, beginning with the elect. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what they look like and what nation they were scattered amongst, because they were scattered among all nations. Eventually, the Heavenly Father will gather his people. This is about, that's what this ministry is about. It's about the Lord gathering his people. Even Yahweh Shai said that. How often, let's get that, how often, uh, how often would, oh, it comes up, yeah, here it is right here, and then we're going to go from there to Baruch, the fifth chapter, Matthew 23, 23 and 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which represents the Israelites, Thou that killest the prophets, yeah, Israel was a nation known for killing their prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How Here's the point. How often would I have gathered thy children together? So we're living in a time where the Heavenly Father is gathering his people, his people, as in the Israelites, beginning with the elect. And it doesn't matter where the elect is scattered or what they look like. The Lord is gathering his people. Because he looks on the heart. He looks on the spirit. He knows every spirit where they are. 
every Israelite spirit. He knows where every Israelite spirit, where they are, where they've been scattered to, because he's the one that scattered them, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, okay? There's a scripture where it says, even the very hairs on our head are numbered. So if the Heavenly Father knows the very number of hairs you have on your head is not where Israel uh, located, he's not going to know, especially when he's the one that scattered them. Come on, man. <laughs> you got these Israelites that put limitations on the Heavenly Father. You can't put no limitations on the Heavenly Father. Not even time is subjected to the Heavenly Father. He created time. So let that wrap around your brain. He created time. Time is not even sub subject to the Heavenly Father. So there you go. Matthew 23 and 37 again. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Here's the point. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens and under her wings, and you would not. So we're in a time where the Lord is gathering his people together, the Israelites, beginning with the elect. Okay? And the majority of the other Israelites, they don't want to be gathered together. Okay? So that's why we're only concerned about the elect. Let's go from there to the Apocrypha. Two scriptures. Let's get uh, Baruch. Baruch 4 and 37. And then Baruch 5 and 5. 4 and 37, which says this. Oh, uh, let's start at 36. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the heavenly Father. Right. That joy is this knowledge, this truth. Okay, which comes to us from the throne of Yahweh Bar Shai. All right. Bear with me for a minute. Let me quickly get a scripture on that for you. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 18. All right. It says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Wisdom of Solomon 3. Oh, no. I keep thinking it's Wisdom of Solomon, third chapter. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 17. Let's try that. All right, here it is. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 16. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon the earth. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. But the things that are in heaven who have searched out. And thy counsel, that's the joy that cometh or comes to us from the heavenly father, right? That's the joy. And thy counsel, which is, which is this knowledge, this truth, these scriptures. And thy counsel who have known. See? Except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. And he's, he's only doing that to the elect. So that's the joy that, that, that uh, comes to us from the Heavenly Father. Okay. So let's get back to Baruch 4 and 37. Let's read that again. Well, 4 and 36. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the heavenly Father. I just showed you the scripture, the precept for that. Okay? That's this knowledge, this truth that comes to us from the heavenly Father, right? Lo, thy sons, and it comes to us through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Right? Who, who the sons? The Israelites that were scattered by the heavenly Father because of our wickedness. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 chapter one of the curses that came upon us was to be scattered all across the world Deuteronomy 28 64 you can read it for yourself lo thy sons come whom thou sentest away they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the holy one see that's how the Lord is gathering his people remember what Yahweh I said how often I would would I gather you so right now, the elect are being gathered. It doesn't matter what they look like. doesn't matter what nation they were scattered amongst. Yahweh Shimei Shai is going to, like it says in Amos, he's going to sift the house of Israel. He's going to get his elect and bring them back. Okay? Uh, they, 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 they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of the Heavenly Father. See that? Now let's go to the same book, Baruch 5 and 5, which pretty much says the same thing. Then we're going to go back to the video. Baruch 5 and 5. Arise, O J Jerusalem, stand on high, and look about toward the east, and behold thy children gathered from the west 
unto the east by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the remembrance of the Heavenly Father. And the remembrance begins with his true name and his son's name. Those are among the many things that is brought back to our remembrance. Uh, the name of the Heavenly Father, his true name and his son's name is brought back to our remembrance, which is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai in the ancient Hebrew. Lashon Kodash is brought back to our remembrance. Our whole, the holy tongue, the pure tongue. The Heavenly Father has given us that language back. All right, we've been brought back to our remembrance. Jude, the first, the first chapter. Jude, the first chapter. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. You see? So, let's get back to the video. They declared their pedigree. Now, as heavy read that because I showed you the etymology of the word genealogy. And one of the words that was mentioned there was pedigree. So it goes back to your fathers. We get our, our nationality from our fathers. Okay? We get our nationality from our fathers. The, our fathers carry the seed. Of their father. So, we, you are what your father is. Because the man has the seed. If a man, if a plant, an uh, apple seed, is going to grow an apple tree. So your father's seed is Puerto Rican. The Puerto Rican is one of the sons of Israel, which is the tribe of, the tribe of Ephraim. Yeah, Puerto Rico, which means rich port, which is actually a, a byword. It's a misnomer. Okay, port of riches, because the majority of people down there, they're not, they don't, if they had a port of riches, they wouldn't be so poor. Okay, that was a, that was an insult that was put on those people. And that goes back to the curses. All the tribes of Israel, eventually they became a byword. Let me show you that. Deuteronomy 28. Because you got certain Israelites teaching that, that the so-called Puerto Ricans are not of the tribe of Ephraim. <laughs> yeah, okay. Deuteronomy 28. And, uh, what is that, 60? No, 37. I think it's 37. Yeah, there it is right here. Deuteronomy 28, 37, and thou shalt become an astonishment. Right, because uh, we lost our power. Look at the state, our, the state of our people. Our people have become an astonishment. The men as well as the women. Okay? It says, and thou shalt become an astonishment because of the state we're now in. A proverb, right? Here's the point. And a byword. And that's what Puerto Rican is. That's a byword. That's not a true nationality. No such thing as a Puerto Rican. All right, when you go back to the history of those people, they go back to the tribe of Ephraim, one of the sons of Jacob. All right, one of the sons of Joseph, which Joseph himself was a son of Jacob. Okay? That's why scripture says it's high time for our people to wake up out of sleep. All right? When you're born again, you come back to your nationality. That word born in the Italian, the word there for born is nato. Nato. Which the word NATO goes back to nation, nationality. That's why we ask, back in the day, we used to ask, one of the questions we used to ask is, what's your nationality? You'd be surprised, the majority of our people, they don't even know their true nationality, according to the Bible. They haven't got a clue. That's why the Lord said that his people are Sodish children. Jeremiah 4 and 22, Sodish means stupid. It says, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. You see that? So it's time for us to come back to the remembrance of our true nationality. Remember I read to you that scripture, how the Lord's going to bring us back to our remembrance. Our remembrance of who we truly are, our true nationality, which goes back to our fathers, our forefathers. You see? It's all important, man. All right, let's get back to the video. And remember, we read the scripture in Hosea, Ephraim is not hid from the Heavenly Father. Remember, he said that. The, the name Ephraim goes back to the Hebrew Aparayim, which means I am fruitful. All right? I am fruitful. 
That's what the, that's what the name Ephraim means. Just because you got a skin complexion of another nation or a white man doesn't mean that you're an Edomite. That's bullshit. That's that exactly. black supremacist, prejudice, unlearned, novice behavior in intelligence. I appreciate that. You know, like, uh, it hurts a little bit, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I feel like I'm not accepted. You know, like yeah, what it said, it hurts a little bit. Yeah, and you, you still got that ignorance, uh, and predominantly in both communities, the so-called Puerto Rican community and so-called Black community, they still got that old hatred for each other. When when the truth is, we are brothers. Okay, we are brothers. The tribe of Ephraim, they are brothers, man. The tribe of Ephraim came out of the tribe of Judah. But see, again, when you go back to the history of Israel, you had that split between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom this is why wait a minute now hold up now the lord said judah shall not vex ephraim right vex ephraim because they're they're coming together man we're coming together as a people and that's that's what scares the shit out of the top wicked elite of esau because the top wicked elite of esau they know exactly who we are and who the tribes are so when they see us coming together as, as one nation, man, they're, they're afraid, man. They are afraid. And that's why they try to keep that division between so-called blacks and so-called Puerto Ricans. But it, it, it's not working, Esau. It's not working. So-called blacks and so-called Puerto Ricans are coming together because they're, they're part of the same nation. We're part of the same nation, that being the nation of Israel, 12 tribes. Okay, this is the book of Isaiah 11 and 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble, as that word is uh, gather again, assemble means to gather, right? Shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, right? Like Ephraim, the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah, see, from the four corners of the earth. That's the time we're living in, man. The Lord is gathering his people by bringing them back to their true nationality and letting them know what happened to them as a people, why they're in this condition, blah, 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 okay? <laughs> and the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, have set up the true teachers to teach this information, beginning with Elder Pastor on down. We those men that have been sent out there, that's why we, we call ourselves apostles. Apostles just mean sent away. We've been sent out there to bring out this information. And, and, and the Lord is going to gather his elect through that information. And then all hell is going to break loose. Once the elect are totally sealed by this information, all hell is going to break loose. This place is done, man. This place called America is done, done, finished. Okay? It says, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. That's north, south, east, and west. So this is all over the world. That prophecy right there lines up with Matthew 24 and 30. Where it says, Yahweh Shai, when he comes back. As a matter of fact, let me show you that. Let me show you how they link up. That was the Old Testament, right? Let's go to the New Testament. Got certain Israelites. Oh, I don't deal with the Old Testament. I just deal with the New Testament. Oh, I just deal with the New Testament. I don't deal with the Old Testament. Both of you clowns are lost. The Heavenly Father, the one who's truly instructed in these scriptures, they deal with both. The New and Old Testament. There's a scripture that tells you that. Matthew 24 and 30. It says, uh, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That's Yahweh Shai. This is when he comes back on that day, the great day of the Lord, when he returns. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Why? Because Yahweh Shai is going to kill a lot of people. Isaiah 66. The slain of the Lord shall be many. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, that's those chariots, so-called UFOs, with power and great glory. Here's the point. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Hold up, isn't that what Isaiah 11 says? And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. There you go. See that? And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, the elect comes out the nation of Israel, from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other, because they have been scattered from one end of the heaven to the other. Now let's keep reading. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart. Right, going back to 
what caused the split between Jeroboam and Rehoboam. It was over envy, all right, envy and oppression, all right. Judah was oppressing Ephraim. Judah was vexing Ephraim. Ephraim had envy Judah. So that animosity caused that split between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Now we're living in a time where the Lord is gathering his, together his people as one, one nation. Okay, all 12 tribes coming together. It says, the envy also of Ephraim shall depart. Through what? Through this knowledge. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim, because they're coming together. You see? So there you go. Let's go back to the video. I feel like I'm not accepted. You know, like a lot of people. Right. Well, that's the body that's a lot of spirit. You know, but, but, once again, because we got, because we got this like foreigners, so we got foreigners that might look like Chinese, that might look like East Indians, so you hear what the brother's saying? You got Israelite foreigners that might look like Chinese, might look like East Indians. Again, that knowledge really wasn't taught back there at, at 1 West 125th Street. It really, it, really, it really wasn't pushed out like that back then, as it's being pushed out now, that knowledge. And that came through Elder Pastel and Down. That came through us. Those are facts. Okay? Let's hear that again. Now let's bring a scripture out on that, what he said there. Uh, recover, recover the remnant. Here we go. This is Isaiah 11. Look at the subhead in there. The restored remnant. Remnant of who? What nation? The nation of Israel. The Lord's only dealing with the remnant right now, which, which is another title for the elect. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time, again the second time, to recover the remnant of his people. See? Which shall be left from Assyria. So you're going to have Israelites coming out of Assyria. And from Egypt, you're going to have Israelites coming out of Egypt, and from Paphros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shana. He said the East Indians, right? Elam. Elam. The East Indians are also known as Elam. That's their true biblical nationality. But you have Israelites among them. So a remnant of them is going to come out of that place, all right? Or those, not just that place either, those people. So-called East Indians, a lot of them Punjabis, man, a lot of them are Jakes, Israelites. You see? And not every Israelite, we said that years ago, not every Israelite is going to look like Wesley Snipes or Richard Roundtree who played John Shaft. I said that years ago, man. All right? Let's read that one more time. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set, set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from where? from Assyria and from Egypt and from Paphros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shana and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So everywhere you have an Israelite, especially an Israelite foreigner, doesn't matter what nation their, 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 uh, 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 their amounts, their stuck amounts, Yahweh Shemiah will gather them through this word. They will hear this word, receive it with faith and believe and then ultimately be saved be delivered by Yahweh Shai when he comes back, when he gathers his elect. Matthew 24 and 30. I just read it to you. You see? And that is the truth. Okay? Let's get back to the video. East Indians, but their spirit, their Israelite, but it goes to their father. I appreciate that. Thank you guys. No, no, we got two more, two more for you. Two more. This is Romans 8 and 16. It says, the spirit so bear witness for our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. So, your spirit resonate with this word. We believe in God, right? I'm an Orthodox Christian. Okay, that's cool. And when you hear the word, the, the word, um, he said he's Orthodox Christian because he don't know. But when you hear the word, if you're a member of the elect, it will resonate with you. All right? Uh, let's see, Hebrews 4. Because this knowledge, this truth is not for everybody. It's not for every Israelite. It's only for the elect. All right. Hebrews 4 and 2, for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. 
which the brothers are preaching the gospel as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. See, so if that guy, right, if he's a member of the elect, this guy here, it, once he hears the word, the heavenly father will give him the gift of faith. He'll believe it and come into it. But if he's not of the elect, it, it's not going to profit him, just like I read there. And by the way, the gift of faith, it, it is just that, a gift. The gift of faith to believe in the word, to, he to hear it with understanding and then believe in it. It's a gift. Let's read that. Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are ye saved. See, we're under grace right now. Are ye saved? Saved by who? Yahweh Shai, when he comes back, save us from the destruction that's coming, right? For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, right, it is the gift of the Heavenly Father. You see that? So it's a gift given to you when you first hear the word, you believe it. It's a gift given to you to believe it. Okay, and he only, he's only given it to the elect. Uh, Ephesians 2 and 8 in the NLT, the Heavenly Father saved you by his grace when you believed, right? And, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from the Heavenly Father. Exactly. And that's why we got to be humble. That is one of the main reasons why we got to be humble in this thing of ours. The greater thou art, the more humble ourselves. Because the gift that we have or that we've been given in this thing is not of ourselves. It's of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. So by that fact alone, there's no reason to be proud and behave ourselves proudly against another member in the faith. Doesn't make any sense, man. That's a, a guy that acts like that. That guy has no real understanding of this thing of ours. He really doesn't. Okay. Let's go from there to Romans. What is that? Romans 11 and 7. Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for? That's the, that's the majority of the nation. The only ones that's going to get it is the elect. Scripture is going to tell you that. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, which is the truth, the 100% truth. But the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. See? So it's all about the elect. The elect were given the gift of faith to hear the word, and not only hear it, but understand it and believe in it, and be converted to it. Okay? So if this guy is a member of the elect, he's going to, he heard the word from the brothers, he's going to, Consider it, believe in it, and then he's going he's gonna to convert. He's going to turn his life or he's going to come out of that orthodox Christianity nonsense and get into the real truth, okay? I'm an orthodox Christian. Okay, that's cool. We was all, we all came from different denominations. Well, that's true. But it's Baptist. I myself, I used to be involved in, man, all kind of religions. Jehovah, Jehovah's Witness, Roman Catholic Church, man, you name it. Searching for the truth. But I found the truth because, uh, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai gave me grace. By grace are ye saved. He gave me grace to learn about him and learn about his son. To learn about, because the Lord said the majority of our people are foolish. They don't know him. That's why they make statements like, let me read that to you, Jeremiah 4 and 22. They make statements like, God loves everyone. No, 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 he doesn't. <laughs> First of all, they say God. His name ain't even God. His name is Yahweh. He has the most powerful name on the planet. Do you know how powerful that name Yahweh is? The majority of our people don't know. There's a lot the majority of our people don't know. And one of the main stumbling blocks, that the, and by the way, who created the stumbling block? The Heavenly Father did. One of the main stumbling blocks that the Heavenly Father himself created to keep his people from knowing him is plantation Christianity. Christianity in general. All these religions came out of Christianity. The, the Roman Catholic Church is the mother of all these different religions. Baptist, Pentecostal, Methodist, you name it, man. Even Islam came out of the Roman Catholic Church. Those are facts. Do your research. All these different religions came out of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? That's the biggest, one of the biggest stumbling blocks that the Heavenly Father created from keeping the unworthy from finding the truth. All right. Right now, the Lord is only dealing with the worthy, not the unworthy. The worthy is another title for the elect. That's what you will learn about the Heavenly Father. Let's read Jeremiah 4 and 22. For my people is foolish. Who's the Lord's people? All people? Nope. The Israelites are his people. There's tons of scriptures to prove that. He said his people are foolish. 
They have not known him. They don't know him. They begin with his name, his son's name. They don't know his true characteristics. They don't know that he kills. The scripture in Deuteronomy 32nd chapter where the Lord straight up say, look, telling his people, look, I'm the one that kills and I'm the one that makes alive. So you can apply that to today. If anyone dies, it doesn't matter if they die in their sleep or they die horrifically, brutally. The heavenly father was the one behind the judgment and he uses his angels to carry out his, his, his uh, commands. Okay, just because you can't see the angels don't mean they don't exist. <laughs> I've always said this, man, what you don't see is greater than what you do see. Okay, so Jeremiah 4 and 22, for my people is foolish, they, are, they have not known me. They are sottish children, sottish means stupid, look it up. And they have none understanding, there you go. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. That's why they have to be instructed. Let's read that in the NLT. My people are foolish and do not know me, says the Lord. They are stupid children. <laughs> Here you go. Who have no understanding. They are clever enough at doing wrong, right? But they have no idea how to do right. And that's where we come in. That's our job, to instruct them how to do right, how to think right, how to do right. Now, the majority of them are not going to listen to us. And we already know this. It's only the elect that's going to listen to us, which is a small number in comparison to the rest of the Israelites. We already know this. This is what we signed up for. This is, this is what we're against. And our, the main people that come against us is our own people. Check that out. Check that out. Well, like Yahweh Shai said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that kill us the prophets. It was so back then, it's so now. A lot of these people, if they could kill us, man, they would. Okay, they'd try to get rid of us. Simply because we're teaching the truth of who the Lord's tr people are. <laughs> so, there you go. Let's move on, man. After the Seventh-day Adventists, but then we came to learn our true nationality. Exactly. And the Bible doesn't deal with those denominations. It deals... That's the key word, Barack Obama said. Nationality. Nationality. What is your true nationality? And I'm asking you people out there that are new to this, you might be hearing this information... For the first time, you might have stumbled on my channel. That's the question you need to ask yourself. What is your true nationality? Because you've been lied to. What is your true nationality? What, what nation did you come out of? The Heavenly Father created nations of people. Okay? When you can answer that, then that, you're, on your, you're on the journey to discovering yourself. You're on the journey to 100% truth. Nationality and the Lord's and in the faith of the Messiah. Do you guys believe in the Lord or covenant? Yeah. For like example, like, like as an Orthodox, I believe, you know, there's the, the 613 Messianic laws and the Mosianic laws. Right. Right. And after that, when Christ comes. Yeah, but those laws weren't given to the Orthodox. There's, there's, no, there's no such thing as Orthodox Christianity. Okay, those laws were given to the nation of Israel, the Israelites. Okay, so, you know, he's using this false philosophy as, as to identify himself, he, he's lost. The way you identify yourself is what nationality are you? Oh, I'm a Hebrew Israelite of the tribe of Ephraim. There you go. Oh, what was given to me? Laws, statutes, and commandments. It was given to all the Israelites, the nation of Israel. And that's one of the reasons why we fell into that degraded state. Because we couldn't keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the, of the Heavenly Father. We broke the covenant. So the Heavenly Father punished us by putting a series of curses upon us. Where do you find the curses? Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. One of those curses was we would become a byword. Why do you think they call these people so-called Puerto Ricans? It's a byword, you see? So this is 100% truth you hear in here. So we're not under, like, for example, like eating pork is, you know, considered, like, it's definitely kosher, you know, right. like, after that, I mean, there's some scriptures that Christ says it doesn't matter what the food is. Another thing, his name is not Christ. You see? Again, Jeremiah 4 and 22, my people are Sardis children. His name is not Christ. Okay, and we've done tons of videos on that. Christ is watered down Greek. In the Greek, it would have been Christos. But his name is not, he doesn't have a Greek name. His nationality, we're talking about the, the only begotten son of the Lord. His nationality was a Hebrew Israelite of the tribe of Judah. He spoke Hebrew. His father and mother spoke Hebrew. The angel that was sent to Joseph and Mary to, to announce to them that they would be given birth to their firstborn son, which turns out to be 
the one the world calls Jesus Christ, ignorantly, which his true name is Yahweh Shai. The angel Gabriel spoke Hebrew. So the, the question is, what is his name in the ancient Hebrew tongue? Remember, the Lord said he's going to bring us back to our remembrance, remember? So these are some of the things we remember. Oh, so his name ain't Jesus Christ. That's right, his name is not Jesus Christ. We have to go back to the ancient Hebrew to, to uh, properly call him by his name. And that is scriptural. Let me show you that. Zephaniah 3 and 9. You see? Zephaniah 3 and 9. That's the prophecy. Uh, Zephaniah 3 and 9. For then will I turn to the people of pure language. What is that pure language? The ancient Hebrew. Lashwan Kadesh. Even the so-called Jews, they call it Loshen Kadesh. When you look up the term, it means the pure tongue, the holy tongue. So that's your pure language, the ancient Hebrew language. So the Lord said he's going to turn to the people. Who's the people? The Israelites, beginning with the elect. That's why we're coming back to our true nationality and our true language, which is ancient Hebrew. Lashuan Kodash. And then will I turn to the people of pure language. Why? That they may all call upon the name of the Lord. It's impossible for you not for you to call upon the name of the Lord and not use that pure language. That's impossible. So when you're saying Jesus or Christ, you're not calling upon the true name of the Lord. When you're saying God, you're not calling upon the true name of the Lord. Now, when you say Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, now you're calling upon the true name of the Lord because that's the ancient language. That's the pure tongue the Lord is talking about, pursuant to Zephaniah 3 and 9. That's why knowing the name of the Lord and his son's name is very important. Now you're getting the attention of the Heavenly Father and the Son. You're calling them by their names. It's just like on the planet Earth. If you call a guy, you might see a dude walking down the street. And you say, hey, man, hey, man. He might not even turn around. I'm, who are you talking to? There's many. There's, you know, he might be walking in the crowd, right? And this is a, 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 some guy you recognize, but you don't know his name. And you go, hey, man, hey, man. He, he, he's like, you, you ain't talking to me. There's all these men walking around. But now, let's say you, you, you know the guy personally. Let's say his name is Rick. And you say, hey, Rick. Now you got his attention. Now he's going to turn around. Oh, hey, how you doing, man? You know? You see? So it's the same thing with the Heavenly Father and the Son. You got to know their names. Proverbs 30. Let's get that. 30 and 4. Who have ascended up into heaven or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fists? Who have bound the waters in the garment? Talking about the power of the Heavenly Father. Who have established all the ends of the earth. What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? So if, if we've been instructed by this by the Holy Spirit, if we've been given this knowledge, this truth, we'll be able to tell. If we've been brought back to our remembrance, remember? Brought back to our remembrance, we'll be able to tell the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son and call them by their names. You see? So it's important to know the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. And don't let any Israelite tell you otherwise, that you can call him whatever you want to call him. That's bullshit. It doesn't even work that way on planet Earth. If a guy's name is Rick and you steady calling him John, after a while he's going to curse you out. He's going he to say, why you keep calling me John, man? My name is Rick. So it's the same thing with the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. You keep calling His only begotten Son Jesus Christ. After a while, why you keep calling me Jesus Christ? My name is not Jesus Christ. Why you keep calling me that shit? And it's through plantation Christianity you call him Jesus Christ because you're ignorant. You, you Look, Jeremiah 4 and 22, my people are Sardis children. They don't know. You're ignorant. You have to be instructed the right way. You have to be instructed the right way to call upon the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. You have to be taught. Okay? Can't make it any plainer, man. All right, let's get back to the video. Matter of fact, that, that is scriptural. You have to be instructed. Isaiah 54 and 13. And everything we say, we can back it up with the scriptures. You better believe it, man. Everything we say. And I have no script here. I'm going totally by the Holy Spirit, man. I don't need no script. I got the script through the Holy Spirit. How about that? Isaiah 54 and 13. And all, all thy children, who are the children of the Lord? The Israelites shall be taught of the Lord. One of the things you're going to be taught is his true name and his son's name. And the instructor got to be a qualified instructor to teach you correctly because you got many false prophets 
and many false teachers out there. The scriptures tell us that. There are more false prophets and more false teachers out there than there are the true ones. Okay? So it says, and, all, and it's set up that way because the Heavenly Father only wants the elect. Plus, the Heavenly Father already said he made the path of truth so narrow, only one man can tread it at a time. That's why there are more false teachers and more false prophets out there deceiving the people than they are the true ones. Because the path of truth is so narrow. It tells you that in Matthew 7 and 13. The path of truth is so narrow, only one man can tread it at a time. It was designed that way by the Heavenly Father. You see? So this thing of ours is deep, man. It's, it, it's deep. All right? Isaiah 54 and 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. There you go. Beginning with the elect. Let's get back to the video. He got him, man. Luke six and forty six. Let's get that. The scripture comes to mind. Luke six and forty six. See a lot of ignorance among our people, man. So you can see we we get, we got our job cut out for us. But the only ones that's going to listen is the elect. And over the years we've come to that realization. It's all about the elect. You know you got other Israelite groups trying to save the whole nation. They are not knowing the scriptures, man. Luke six and forty six. These are the words of Yahweh Shai. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, or Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, and do not the things which I say? Right. So. Like the brother said, if, if how should I kept the law, statutes, commandments, it's our job to try our best to keep the law, statutes, commandments. We say we love the Lord and we don't do what he said to do. He, he himself said to keep the commandments. I mean, but there's like a lot of stuff in Galatians that like, like circumcision. Right. Paul is like, you know, when you yeah, gotta be circumcised. Your heart supposed to be circumcised. So like, you know, bottom law is the, well talking about circumcision but eventually if you if you have the holy spirit within you you want to get circumcised bottom line is the, the apostle paul said it best we establish the law meaning we keep it romans 3 and 31 we keep we keep the law to the best of our ability because even though we're not going to be saved by the law and even though we can't keep all the laws doesn't mean we can't try okay that that the, again james said show me as a matter of fact, let me get that for you. This is how we show you our faith. James, what is that? James, you can say you have faith, but you don't try to keep the law, and that means you're a liar. You show your faith by trying to keep the law. Here it is right here, James 2 and 18. Yeah, man, yeah, man may say thou hast faith, and I have works. Works go back to where? To what? The law, right? The commandments, right? The statutes etc. Uh, yeah, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I, James speaking here, who's this James, by the way? Yahushua's biological brother. That's right. And I will show thee my faith by my works. So we, we not only do we say, we back up what we say. We try to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability. And that is that is a, a a way of showing our faith, you see, like James said here. So we try to establish the law. Let's go to that. Romans three and thirty one. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Meaning no. Yea, we establish the law. Okay, let's read that in the NLT. Well, then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. Only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. Yeah, because there's this thing where it talks about the law of faith. But faith, as James said, faith is showed by works. The works, which goes back to the law. We try to keep the law to the best of our ability. Okay, let's get back to the video. Yeah, you gotta be circumcised. Your heart supposed to be circumcised. But eventually, you want to get fle uh, fleshly circumcised too. 
It depends. Again, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. If you're fully persuaded that you have the 100% truth, eventually you want to get circumcised because that's a that's a law that the Heavenly Father gave. And there's, there's uh, you know, that's a, that's a law the Heavenly Father gave us Israelites. Circumcision. And, and, and there's, uh, even in the secular world, they'll tell you that the matter of fact, uh, penile cancer comes from not being circumcised. The high rate people with the high rates of penile cancer is because they would they were not circumcised. Okay, penile cancer comes from not being comes from not being circumcised. I just want to see what comes up. Being circumcised. I could never spell that word. Uh, let's see here. Look at this. Still, some experts have said that circumcision prevents penile cancer. So that's one of the reasons why Yahweh Barshim Yahshai gave us the law of circumcision. Again, you can research this. The high rates, people, men with high rates of penile cancer, one of the reasons is because they were not circumcised. So it's a it's a cleanliness thing. All that germs get stuck underneath the the, the the foreskin of the penis. So circumcision makes sense for cleanliness. You know what they say about cleanliness. Cleanliness is next to godliness, righteousness. So it's a righteous thing to get circumcised. If you brothers that are in the faith, if you haven't done it, you should you should see look into getting it done. All right, you should look into getting it done. S still, some experts have said that circumcision prevents penile cancer. Okay, in the U.S., the risk of penile cancer is low, even among uncircumcised men. But again, still. Experts have said that circumcision prevents penile cancer. So that's one of many good reasons to get to get a uh, circumcised. And again, this is something you have to research for yourself. Let's go on. You ain't gotta be circumcised. Your heart supposed to be circumcised. Now, you know, it's it's very it's a very complex. You see what I'm saying? No, it's not. It's not complex. You're making it complex through through your ignorance. It's very easy. Just establish the law. There's certain laws you can keep, and certain laws you can't keep. That's where faith kicks in. You just shall live by faith. All right. But there's certain laws we can keep. Keeping the Sabbath. All right. Uh, keeping the 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 high holy days, which is part of the law. Uh, not shaving it off your beard. It's a law you can keep. Not eating pork. That's a law you can keep. All right. But our people, they don't, they don't want to do the work, man. They don't want to do the work. That's why eventually, if they don't repent, they will be destroyed. Thousands of denominations. Because everyone right. wants to argue with yes. what's right what about what believe, they say. Believe. No, I the law is what's right. Is that First Timothy? First Timothy one and eight. Let's get that. 1 Timothy 1 and 8. It says this, 1 Timothy 1 and 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Okay? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, doesn't mean a righteous man don't keep the law. That's what makes him righteous. But for the lawless and disobedient, that's why you have the laws. And the Apostle Paul said, I had not known sin except I knew it by the law. What is sin? Transgression of the law. So if you don't want to live by the law, then you, you're, you're just sinning willy-nilly, man. Eventually, Yahweh Barshim Yahshua will judge you based on those sins. So we want to learn about the laws as much as we can so we can prevent ourselves from sinning willy-nilly, right? Apostle Paul said, um, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. What do you mean by that? Bring it into subjection to the law. Try to keep the law to the best of our ability. Okay? 
uh, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. See? So we, we, we have the law. The law is a schoolmaster. Let's get that. What is that? Galatians 4? A guideline, man. A guideline. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Three and bear with me for a minute. Schoolmaster. Schoolmaster. Should come up now. Yep, Galatians three actually. Galatians three and twenty-four. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. To bring us unto Yahweh that we might be justified by faith. So we don't we don't negate the law. Okay, let's get back to the video. I'm gonna make this video too long. It's already an hour. That's why the Lord is only dealing with the elect. Everybody else is going to be what? Blinded. Everybody else, their mind is going to be in a state of chaos. The Lord is only dealing with his elect. See what he said? There's an elect. The majority is not for the beginning. Yeah, that's what Bible says. This is a King James version. But we read, we read all versions and all translations. Yeah, what Brother Barack Gabbard said? He said the majority is not going to get it. And that's by design, people. They're going to be blinded until the destruction comes. You actually got angels out here blinding the ones the Lord, the unworthy, the ones the Lord don't want. It is right here, Isaiah 6 and 9. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. See? And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, that's their minds. And make their ears heavy. Their minds are fat and heavy. They just can't get it. It won't permeate. Because they weren't given the gift of faith to believe. Remember, we read that. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy. This is what the angels are doing. And shut their eyes. Why? Least they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, meaning their mind, and convert and be healed. So the Heavenly Father don't want to heal them. They're not part of the elect. They're not on that list of the worthy. They're on the list of the unworthy. It's a cold deal, man. So the Lord is only dealing with his elect. So blessed are you if you can hear and understand and really believe in this word. That means there's a very good chance you're part of the worthy and not the unworthy. Because so only, only the elect going to make it out of here in America, man. Only the elect. Matthew 24 and 30. Not for the yeah, that's what Bible says. This is a King James version. But we read, we read all versions and all translations. Living as long as you can ex exegete them. Yeah, well, thanks to vocab. <laughs> like the brother said, we read all translations. Yeah, thanks to vocab. <laughs> Let's move on. Inside joke. As long as you can translate and understand the word that's coming out of you, I don't think it matters what I believe. Right, you don't have to translate. Well, honestly, with that guy, this guy here, he, he's doing a little too much talking. Usually a good sign that someone might be a member of the elect. They're not, it's like he's coming to teach them brothers instead of the brothers teaching them. That's not a good sign. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. You'll be in this thing for a while, you understand that. Ecclesiastes, the, where am I going here? The fifth chapter. It says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the heavenly father. And them three brothers represent the house of the heavenly father. And be more ready to hear. Be more, he's not ready to hear. He's like, he's, he just keeps talking, man. You don't even know your true nationality, my man. What, what are you doing all this talking for? And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Exactly. Keep running, blah, 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 blah. Keep running your mouth. For they consider not that they do evil. Exactly. 
Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before the Heavenly Father. Right. For the Heavenly Father is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. That's the problem for our people, man. They're always ready to show what they what they know or think they know and don't even understand what they what they say. They're just babbling, man. Just babbling. Okay, James 1 and 20. No, 22. Be, be, ye, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceive in your own selves. Yeah, James 1 and 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Let's read this in the NLT. Understanding this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. There you go. I don't think that is what I believe. Right, you don't have to trust me anymore. So this is Matthew chapter 19, verse. Uh, well, you could probably work with this guy, but he he got to, you know, he, he doing a little too much talking, man. Oh, here we go. Like the pastor said, we're in the time of analyzation. We're analyzing everything. Um, forgive me. Matthew chapter 19, verse 18. 15, 16, and behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life, right? This is the rich man. He wanted to know how to get eternal life. And he told him, drop everything you got. Right. No, I remember that passage. Good. And he said unto him, why calls thou me good? There is none good but one. That's the heavenly father. Another question. Do you guys believe in the Trinity? No. You don't believe. You didn't even get to finish. <laughs> you can't learn everything in one day, my man. See that? And that is how people they're not they're, they're not uh, patient. That's why they all saying it's true. Patience is a virtue. It's not how you learn. You you gotta get the full understanding first, and then you go to the next. Uh, you know, you go to the next uh, question. But that's our people, man. Because. The Heavenly Father is one entity. The Messiah is another entity. And the Holy Spirit is a different entity. Yeah, they're separated. Okay. Same in the same spirit, but different entities. Even Yahweh I said, my father is greater than I. Let's get that. My father is matter of fact, who who you think raised Yahweh out of the grave? Did he raise up himself? I think not. John ten and twenty nine. My, these, these are the words of. These are the words of Yahweh Shai himself. John ten and twenty seven. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give the, unto them eternal life. Oh, so when Yahweh Shai comes back and he gathers his elect, one of the gifts we're gonna get is eternal life. That's underneath the new covenant. And I give unto them eternal life because he's been given eternal life by his father Yahweh. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, he's talking, who's he talking about? Joseph, his biological father? Nope. He's talking about his heavenly father, Yahweh. That's who. My father, which gave them me, is so he didn't get the elect, he didn't give them to himself. His father gave them to him. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all, including Yahweh Shai. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Then he goes on to say, I and my father are one. What, what, what do you think he meant by that? Are they the same entity? Nope. Or else he wouldn't have said my father is, is greater than all. My father which gave them to me. Okay. Not, and not that Yahweh has multiple personalities. No, they're separate entities. Okay. They are separate entities. Here we see how in the same book, John, we see Yahweh Shai praying to his father. What was he doing? Praying to himself? John 17 and 1, the high priestly prayer. These words spake Yahweh Shai and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, who is he speaking to? Himself? No, he's speaking to the heavenly father. 
Father, the hour has come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. And he's the Son of the Heavenly Father. The voice that came out the chariot and said, uh, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. That was his Father. The Father Yahweh. That was his voice that said that. No, Yahweh is not a ventrilo ventriloquist. Let's move on. The Messiah is another entity. And the Holy Spirit is a different entity. You see, I struggle with that. Okay. There's, there's, you know, I am the Father of one. It says that in the Bible. You struggle. You see? You hear what he said? I am the Father of one. He don't understand that. The Messiah is another entity. And the Holy Spirit is a different entity. You understand? You see, I struggle with that. Okay. There's, there's, you know, I am the Father of one. It says that in the Bible. Right. You know, They're one in the, in the same understanding. They're one. Just like, look, case in point. Uh... And they twain let me get that for you. The man when it says a man and woman are one, right? Are they the same entity? Let's get that. Matthew nineteen and five. Well, let's start at four. Matthew nineteen and four. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that with that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, right? We, we know it's talking about Adam and Eve, right? And and this and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother, right? And cleave to his wife, right? And they twain, twain is another word for two, shall be one flesh. So are they the same entity? Is the man and woman of the same entity? No, of course not. Let's read that in the NLT. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united into one. <laughs> Come on. So it's the same understanding with the father and the son. There's, they're one in the same understanding. They're united together. They're not divided against each other. That's what that means. It doesn't mean they're the same entity because Yahweh Shai said, see, he forgot the part where Yahweh Shai said his father is greater than him. He remembers the part where, and, and that goes back to plantation Christianity, because that's what plantation, you remember he said he's an orthodox Christian. That's part of their tenets. They teach that the father and the son are the same, the same as in one. They're the same entity, which is not the truth. Okay, what is his name and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Remember, I read that to you in Proverbs. Let's read the sixth verse. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. One, so, the, the, so what does that mean? The, 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 uh, uh, the man and his woman, are they, are they one flesh? No. They're one in understanding. They're one in being united to, with each other. Okay? Uh, then it goes on to say, What therefore the Heavenly Father have joined together in mind, not in actual flesh, let no not let not man put asunder. There you go. Let's get back to the video. You understand? See, I struggle with that. Okay. There's, you know, I am the father of one. It says that in the Bible. Right. You know, and and it's, agreeing. But also, what's it called? The trans not the transfiguration. But when Thomas says, uh, I won't believe until I see until I see Christ. They're at what's it called? The disciples came to Thomas and were like, Thomas, Thomas. The Messiah has risen. Right. And he was like, I, I, if I don't see the Christ's hands, I, I will believe. Right. And when, when Christ appears to, uh, to Thomas, he drops down and he says, my Lord, my God. So, right. You know what I mean? And there's, uh, so before Abraham was born, I, I am. am. So the Messiah is a God. Exodus 314. The Messiah is a God. But so uh, his people, the Israelites. Well, here's the thing. Um, he said, hold up now. Let's hear that again. The Messiah has risen. Yeah, but here's the thing about the Heavenly Father. He has no beginning, no end. Yahweh has a beginning. Revelation 1 and 8. The Heavenly Father has no beginning and no end. 
this is what Yahweh Shai said. You're going to see these words written in red. Revelation 1 and 8. I am the Alpha, or I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha is a Greek word meaning beginning. Omega means end. The beginning and the ending. See? Save the Lord. Save the Lord. Now look at that word Lord. L notice, right? Notice the uh, L is in capital letter, but the rest is in lowercase. Now, usually when it when it's talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, usually you'll see these words all in capital letters. Because when you go into Hebrew, it'll say Yahweh, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. And he got he got his power from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. But again, these 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 people that uh, that come out of Christianity, they believe that the Heavenly Father and the Son are the same are the same entity because they've been deceived. That's part of that stumbling block I told you about. The Heavenly Father and the Son are not the same. Okay? They're two separate entities. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is much more powerful than Yahweh Shai. Way more powerful. Even Yahweh Shai admitted that. Case in point. All right, here's an, here's an example for you. No man knoweth the day. Let's get that. Know if the day, the day when our Lord is returning, he don't even know. So if he if he is the Father, he would know the day that he's returning. No man knoweth. Hope it comes up. It is. These are the words of Yahweh Shai. This is uh, Matthew 11 and 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. So if they're the same entity, why would he say this? And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. See that? You see the difference? Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come on, man. He's putting a distinction between the Son and the Father. Okay? I want to get that one scripture but my father only, but my father only. Father only. There we go. Matthew 24 and 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. That's the day when he, when he returns. Only his father knows. So he don't even know. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Look at that. The NLT it even gets more, more clearer for you. Matthew 24 and 36. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the son himself. Only the father knows. So come on, man. What more proof do you need? separate entities it's a god so uh it's the, the israelites of god did not he say ye are god did he say that to the scribes and pharisees that ye are god so the israelite man is a god that's right but we are under the curse Low, lowercase god that's right psalm 82 and 6 john 10 and 34 so we die we are under sin so we die so i got something for you because you said that you fall to the lord right this is Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour... See how, how the brother's dealing? Barack Gabar, that's how you do it, man. That's how you do it. You bring out the scriptures. You bring out the scriptures. That's why the scriptures say, Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's exactly how you teach. Oh, if no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father Beautiful. only. So now, now, I haven't watched the video all the way to the end. I didn't know he was going to bring out that scripture. But the Spirit made him bring it out. See? The same scripture I just showed you in this video. Oh, I just want to... 1 John, 1 John 5, 7. Yeah, 1 John 5, 7. Because that's the, tr that's the trinity. Yeah, yeah he's going right. to bring that out. But he, that was he don't understand that. He still doesn't get it. The Heavenly Father is separate from the Son, man. Somebody... You know what, Barack Gabar, I don't know if he's going to say, it. Barack Gabar should ask this guy, well, when, when the son died and he laid in that tomb for three days, who raised him out of the grave? Did he raise up himself? I would love to hit, see the answer from the guy with the blue hat. 
Catholic for the text. So you're saying the Catholic, the, the Catholic. They put that in the script because that's not in the original sexual religion. That's not in the original Hebrew. You understand? They added that in there because the fault, the first church, or the first church fathers, they added a lot of paganism yep. into the Bible. And that's, that's, how, that's how, like, what's it called, Gnosticism came into the Bible. Well, it was the church fathers that created uh, uh, Christianity. The roots of plantation Christianity goes back to those wicked church fathers. And Apostle Paul spoke about them, play. That's them characters, man. The wicked church fathers. What do you think Acts 20 and 29 was all about? And remember, Apostle Paul was on the scene in the early century, first century AD. Them church fathers didn't come until another 200, almost 300 years later. And Apostle Paul prophesied on them, 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 them uh, ninjas, okay? Acts 20 and 29. Acts 20 and 29. Let's start at 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit have made you overseers. The flock of who? The elect that had the pure doctrine of Yahweh Shai. The pure doctrine of Yahweh Shai, right? Because in those days you had many different doctrines. But only one was correct. That's the pure doctrine of Yahweh Shai. The 100% truth. It says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over to which the Holy Spirit have made you overseers to feed the church of the Heavenly Father, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, right, the pure doctrine of Yahweh Shai. There you go. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves, that's your church fathers. They're an example of your grievous wolves. Shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Right, bringing in, bringing in heresies, bringing in, uh, Jude even spoke about those guys. The Jude, the first chapter, bringing in heresies, bringing in lies, bringing in false truths, okay? Inconsistencies and using the scriptures to do it. Perverting the gospel, there you go, all right? Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things, there you go, to draw away disciples after them, you see? Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Right. So the Apostle Paul warned about that. And that's exactly what happened after his death, after his departed. Many were corrupted from the 100 percent truth. And then out of that's Christianity, Roman Catholic Christianity came out of the church fathers. It started basically started with so-called black people, and then when the so-called white man took over under, under the Borgia family, they carried that reprobate tradition to the point of what we have today. The majority of people have been tainted by that Roman Catholic bullshit, and all them religions, facts, all them religions came out of the, the, the Roman Catholic Church. That's a fact. These different religions that got people all bugged out over here, and again, it goes back to the stumbling blocks the Heavenly Father created. He said by the prophet Ezekiel, he would create stumbling blocks. Okay? What's it called? Gnosticism came into play. Gnosticism came into play. That's how Easter came into play. Where is exactly. Easter? Where is Easter in the, in the, in the laws of Moses? Well, is it, wasn't Passover. Passover. No, okay, what I'm Thank saying you. is. Not, so now it was called Passover. Easter. Where Easter come from? No, what I'm saying Where is Passover rabbit. wasn't a holiday. Like, the Jews turned Passover into a holiday. Am I not wrong? Does he say, am I, am I, am I confused? No, pa Passover is a, is a sacred celebration, okay? Passover. It, it's to commemorate how the Israelites were delivered from Egypt. And then you had Yahweh Shai's Passover, okay? Which uh, Yahweh Shai, spiritually, he was the lamb. And, that, and during Passover, the lamb is killed, Okay? So it's much more than a holiday. It's 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 a sacred. It's a solemn assembly for us Israelites. Passover. Because I don't remember ever reading in the Bible where it says to turn Passover into a holiday. Okay, get um. Holiday just means high holy day. It's a it's a holy day. It's one of the holy days. It tells you that in the the apocrypha. Some days have the heavenly Father. Uh, what is that? You have sanctified. Not every day is alike. Uh, not every day is alike. KJV Apocrypha should come up. I hope it comes up. Oh, come on, man. 
I mean, this is good, but that's not what I want. All right, let's try this. Sum of the days he has he has made holy. Let's try that. You don't think that this is work? You better think again. There we go. Ecclesiasticus 33 and 18. 18 to 22. Let's see what that says. Yeah, Ecclesiasticus 33. 18 to 22. What the heck is this? All right, Ecclesiastes 33 and 9, is it? Ecclesiastes 33 and 9. 33 and 9. There we go. Ecclesiastes 33 and 8. By the knowledge of the Lord they were distinguished, and he altered seasons and feasts. Some of them have he made high days like the Passover and hallowed them like the Passover. And some of them have he made ordinary days. You see that? That's the point. Let's get back to the video. I'm about to wrap this video up. Get um, Leviticus 23. I might be wrong. I'm just asking. Oh, you good. Yeah, like yeah, that's a good one. Leviticus 23 gives you the high holy days. Because, like, you know, Passover is a holiday. Jesus confirms that, you know, he, he, what's it called? Good Friday. Good Friday was on, was on Passover. Where's the word Friday in the Bible? Again, that's that orthodox Christianity. No such thing as Good Friday. There's no Friday. There's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. There's none of that in the, in the scriptures, man. We didn't name out. The, 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 that's pagan. All right. And that didn't come till, uh, uh, what, 300 AD, somewhere around there. All right. Naming the days and shit. Monday, which name after the moon god, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, named after Saturn. It's all pagan, man. We had the first day of the second week or the first day of the first week. That's how we recognize the days. Okay? Once again, the church added a lot of things. So, <laughs> yo, we just, it's crazy. Before you came, right? I said there's a lot of misconceptions that people think is in the Bible that's literally not in there. And if you actually... Again, remember what the Apostle Paul said. Uh, let me refresh your memory. That's why it's important to learn these scriptures. Apostle Paul warned of that. Acts 20 and 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. What do you think the church fathers were? They, they knew the truth, but they perverted it. The little truth that they did know, they perverted it for whatever, for gain, mostly for gain. The love of money is the root of all evil. Okay? And these, these reprobate tenets are still taught to this very day to confuse the people because the Lord is only dealing with the elect anyway. And he made the path of truth so narrow, only one man could tread it at a time. Um, Matthew 7.13 of misconceptions that people think is in the Bible that's literally not in there. And if you actually took the time, not, you don't get what you think, oh, but the majority of people don't read. They just take what they... Um, they don't study. The Bible is very clear on this. Study to show thyself approved. They don't study. They don't research. They don't look up words. They're ignorant of dates. They're ignorant of history. They, oh, man, there's a lot they're ignorant of. But then they walk around and profess to have all this knowledge. And when you, when you scrutinize what they think they know, they find out you find out, and they, and they find out that what they've been taught all is all lies. It's not factual. The Heavenly Father is the power of knowledge, as it is written, man. Speak the facts. As it is written, speak ye the truth every man to his neighbor. Let's go to 1 Samuel 2 and 3. Let's read that. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a power of knowledge. You got to get the knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Yeah. The majority of people don't read. They just take what they, uh, rabbi. The majority of people don't read. Blessed is he that readeth. Revelation 1 and 3. 
So they're yeah. popes or they're priests say and they take it for faith value. Actually going into the book and reading. Okay, again, Leviticus 23. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read Isaiah 34 and 16. Reading is fundamental. <laughs> As Eddie Griffin, Eddie Griffin would say. Or Griff, is it Griffith or Griffin? The comedian. Uh, Isaiah 34, 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. What's the book of the Lord, people? The Bible. And read. No one of these shall fail. And a lot more than reading. The Holy Spirit got to work with you. All right, he, 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 Holy Spirit work with you to look up words and get look up uh, the uh, original tongues, the Hebrew, the Greek, the Latin to understand the scriptures better. Yeah, it's work, man. This is work. You start at one or go to um, you can get, yeah, get one. Uh, All right, it's Leviticus twenty three and one, and the Lord spake unto Moses. All right, I'm I'm gonna have to fast forward here. Ten. At even. How do you guys feel about like? You know how there's, uh, what's the word? Some books people don't consider scripture. Can Like, like. The Apocrypha. Yeah, not the Apocrypha, but like the Book of Enoch, or like, nah. like, you guys don't follow it? Nah, we don't deal with that. Okay. If you don't, if you can't line it up to the original text. But people also say that the Book of Enoch is found in scripture, and it's quoted, um. Yeah, it is quoted in the scripture, but the Book of Enoch we got today floating around is not the Book of Enoch that the Bible was talking about. And once again, when you go into that, it got a lot of mysticism. They got like a lot of magic. It, it talked about giants having sex with humans. The natural one. But that's not in the scriptures. The fallen angels is not what you think is talking about. You understand? So, like, the fallen angels. Be aware of making many books. All right. Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. It's funny how people, they want to go into these other books. They haven't even mastered the scriptures yet. <laughs> that's why they're so confused. Ecclesiastes 12 and 12, and further by these, my son, be admonished, meaning be warned of making many books, the book of Enoch and the book of this and the book of that, the book of the 40 secrets of the planet Earth. You know, all this, just stick to the Bible, man. And further by these, the Bible alone is a challenge. Further by these, my son, be admonished, meaning be, be warned of making many books. There is no end and much study is weariness of the flesh again they're studying all the unnecessary nonsense that makes them even more confused than they already are let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear the heavenly father and keep his commandments where is that contained in the bible for this is the whole duty of man there you go there you go he's the same guy that said i don't think we have to keep the commandments this this guy here and then he used the he tried to use the example of circumcision. Oh, you don't have to get circumcised. See, this, this is why it's confused. He's going to all, all these other books, but he's not sticking to the, the he, he hasn't mastered the real book, which is the Bible. You guys believe in Satan? I'm not sure y'all have a... You good, you good. Yeah, we believe in Satan. It's the crap. I forgot, I was like, hold up. They're not, they're not... It's these Caucasian people walking around here, man. I'm sorry, y'all. God bless y'all. You do. Take care. Tell the walls. You're from the tribe of Ephraim. Remember that. <laughs> Hey, well, at least the seed was planted. If, 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 if this is fertile ground, the seed is going to take root. If not, it is what it is. Not for everyone. It's only for the elect. Okay, so I'm out of here. Hopefully you were edified. Maybe you hung in there till the rest of the video. If you did, then hopefully you got the edification, especially those of you that are new. Hopefully you got the edification that you were looking for. And if you was, or if you did, drop a line in the comment section. All right, as usual, and I'll see you in the next one.